church this beautiful Sunday. We're glad to have you all with us participating from home or wherever you are. Uh, Let's begin our time of worship this morning with some praise songs.
invite you to join with us together now as we recite our call to worship together. God made the world and everything in it. Our life and breath come from God. God made all the nations under heaven. We are all God's offspring. Search for God in our time of worship. When we search, we find God near. Will you pray with me? Hear our prayers, O God, as we come to sing your praises. Bless us with your steadfast love in times of peace and in times of trial. Make your presence known to us this day, for we seek to know you better. Enliven us with your spirit of truth and increase our faith, even as we place our hope and trust in you. In the name of Christ, our foundation and cornerstone, we pray. Amen. Let us continue to praise and worship God together as we sing. <clears throat>
every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name, and the sun is shining down on me, and the world's hell as it should be, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, on the road marked with suffering, for there's pain in the offering, blessed be Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, blessed be your name, you give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name in a land that is plentiful. The streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Special happy birthday to all those celebrating a birthday uh, this month of May. It's the first blessing we have to share as we come into our time in worship where we lift up our blessings and concerns uh, to God together. So there are multiple ways that uh, you can do that uh, during this time where we are worshiping together from a distance. You can. If you feel comfortable, type them into the comment section of the live stream video you find yourself watching, either on Facebook or YouTube, or uh, even better, you can email them into the church or call them in, uh, and we can get those onto our weekly Blessing Can Concern email list. A couple I would like to share with you all this morning, a blessing uh, from just yesterday, uh, our Disciples of Christ churches uh, in the Oregon and Southwest Idaho region uh, celebrated our regional assembly, uh, albeit online only yesterday, uh, as it was originally planned for that day in person uh, to be hosted by the Salem First Christian Church. We decided that we should do uh, something on the day of, even though we can't uh, physically be together. So we had some time online via Zoom and uh, YouTube video uh, to share the news of our region uh, across Oregon and Southwest Idaho. And we heard from partners from Ecuador, 
and the different uh, manifestations of our church and voted on officers and got to see and interact with each other afterwards in our district meetings. Uh, and at last count that I saw, there were around uh, 250 or maybe a little more uh, distinct views of and participants in, in that online event, uh, which is much more than I think we uh, could have hoped for, and we're very happy with that, uh, that level of participation. So a blessing to have that time sharing together as a region and looking towards the future. One of the things that came out of that time was a prayer concern that I want to share with you about our, our mission partners in Ecuador, the Fidice organization. The people there, like people all around the world, are particularly struggling with a martial law situation where they're not allowed to leave their homes uh, and there are stiff penalties for doing so without uh, specific uh, letters of permission. And so uh, that ministry of uh, equipping and serving people in rural areas uh, is struggling now, and they have come up with a plan to, to serve their, their neighbors and, and those in need. Uh, and our region is one of those groups who have, are supporting them in that effort, uh, both prayerfully and financially. And so I'd ask that you would keep them in your prayers in the days and weeks to come. Let's take some time this morning and just breathe and be silent and lift up our prayers and our blessings and thanksgivings for those joys that we do witness, that do happen, and the concerns and anxieties that we all feel. Let's pray. Holy God, God of spirit and God of truth, God who surrounds our very being with your holy presence, you know us very well. You know our struggles, our trials our expectations, our joys, our thanksgivings. We recognize your presence with us this morning as we lift up our prayers to you. God who is a God of presence even as we cannot be physically present with one another, God, by your presence with each of us, we remain connected. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the body of Christ in the world. There is nothing we can do or experience that can change that identity that reality. Lord, we lift up all of our prayers into your waiting and loving hands this morning. We thank you for ways that we remain connected and feel that connectedness with one another. We thank you for the ability to continue to hear and to communicate with ministry partners both near and far. Be with them, God, in their struggles as we know and trust you are with us. Let us continue apace in faith
doing the work of your Son in the world. Your Son who came into the world to show us the way. Up to and including showing us how to pray. Let us join our voices together now as we pray the way he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'd like to invite Mike Reynolds to offer some special music for us this morning. Uh, this week in uh, church council, we were discussing the struggles and fears that people were having. And uh, Eric, Pastor Eric here, he summed that up with just two words, just breathe. Um, this is dedicated to those who are struggling. This is breathe. This is the air I breathe This is the air I breathe Your holy presence Living in me This is my daily bread This is my daily bread Your very word Spoken to me And I I'm desperate for you without you this is the air I breathe this is the air I breathe your holy presence living in me this is my daily bread this is my daily bread your very word
You are my daily bread. Thank you, Mike. I invite you to join me now in a time of children's blessing as we take a moment to think of the young ones in our lives, whether they're in the household with us or their friends or grandkids in another place. Pray a blessing upon them at this time. Holy God, as we find ourselves in this time of seasonal transition, we remember years past and think about the expectations we had for this time, the time we would spend with our children, our grandchildren, our nieces and nephews, our friends, who just happen to be younger than us. And we know there is some sense of disappointment in things not able to be done or happening in different ways. Lord, we ask that you continue to inspire each of us, especially our young ones, with that God-given imagination that you so bless us with. Finding joy amidst the differences, opportunity for imagination, happiness. We ask that you continue to bless us with all these things because they are and will always be present in our lives. Help them to have eyes to see and ears to hear your joyous presence in their lives. Amen. It never ceases to amaze me how the Spirit of God is at work in and through us and around us when often, even as much as I encourage us to be mindful and watchful and aware of the joys that are present around us. I sometimes don't always see it until it smacks me in the face. This morning, well, let's go back to even last night as I reviewed my notes for this sermon and and thinking about what God has for me to say this morning. I thought of song lyrics, one of my favorite camp songs that just so happened to evoke the exact feeling of of the scriptures we have this morning and the topic. And I get here this morning and I'm wondering, should I just read the lyrics or should I be brave and, and sing them? And then I sat in the front pew this morning, a during our time of preparation to to offer this time of worship with you. And my friend Mike Reynolds starts singing the same song. He and I didn't talk about that. Didn't prearrange any of that. I don't think I've ever mentioned this song or how much I've enjoyed singing it in the summer camp context with him ever. But God knew all of that. And the Holy Spirit was obviously, in my mind, moving
And because Mike obviously practiced and is much better at it than I am, I'm just going to read the lyrics to this song once more. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. And I I'm desperate for you. And I am lost without you. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. Die. I'm desperate for you. And I lost without you. In the passage from the book of John this morning, we hear Jesus' conversation with his disciples. And I imagine the disciples having to consider the possibility of life without their beloved rabbi, their mentor, their teacher, their friend. I imagine them feeling like these song lyrics describe. Being desperate and lost. I imagine that is how they felt. But Jesus comes and he offers reassurance. He says to them, I will not... Well, he says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. And on that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. See, Jesus reminds them that he is not abandoning them, even though he is physically not able to be with them much longer. Another advocate, counselor, spirit of truth is coming. Jesus describes this relationship between Jesus and God and Jesus and us and us and God. He says, I am in my Father, you in me, and I in you. This enmeshed relationship that Jesus describes, this 
image of togetherness, completeness, wholeness. Last week we talked a little bit about being of some of the same stuff as Jesus. And here we see Jesus describing what that is and means in His own words. There is one word that Jesus uses. He, he, he takes that idea and condenses it into this sentence, but then He goes even further and He takes that whole idea of oneness, of wholeness between Jesus and God and us. And He he condenses it down to just one word. That word is love. We talk about that a lot in the church, this, and in life in general, this idea of love and, and different ways to express it and what it means and how to define it, and we, we always come up short. But Jesus does not. even as we yet struggle to understand exactly what love is. We catch a glimpse of it here. Jesus says, if we love Him, we keep His commandments. And by keeping His commandments, we are showing our love for Him. Another way to, th to understand that is keeping the Word of Jesus. That is how we love. By letting that oneness that we have inspire our doings, that sense of being flowing out from each of us. This advocate, as he talks about this Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God that Jesus says surrounds us, even dwells in us. Now, there is an ancient way of describing spirit as a, for the ancient Hebrews, it was as a, the word they had for it was like a holy wind, divine breath, something that is breathed into us. Now, Paul, who comes a little bit later, understands this spirit of truth that Jesus talks about. In the passage from Acts we have this week in Acts 17, we find Paul in the city of Athens, a as he endeavors to share the gospel with the people there. Now Athens was a place of, of myriad faiths, Many faiths were expressed and, and practiced in, in Athens. Many gods to which the people felt a, a compulsion and need to worship just in case that god may be the most powerful one or the one who they may risk angering. So many gods in the pantheon of Athens, it was overwhelming. Now, Paul, he spends some time with the people there observing, talking to them, so that he would know how to share the gospel with them. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, 
This I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Paul, we can see, has some deep sense of this spirit, this advocate that Jesus promised to send. In verse 25, he reminds us that in God, in God's spirit, is everything we mortals could need, all life, all breath, all things. In verse 28, we see a reflection of this idea of the surrounding nature of the Holy Spirit, that in God, in God's Spirit, we live and move and have our being. Our lives like it was for those early disciples contemplating their life without their rabbi, their friend, Jesus. It was often overwhelming. We get stuck, frustrated, lost in our own struggles, forgetting that God is with us. As Paul reminds us, the whole point of all of this, God's plan, is that we might grope for God, reach out with grasping hands, that we might find God. For indeed, God is never far from any of us. This spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, advocate, counselor, is that presence of God that in which Paul describes that we live and move and have our being. It is the very air that we breathe. Now, we will always have challenges, trials, changes, much like those early disciples struggling to imagine life without Jesus in their midst. We must remember that God is never far from us. God is, in fact, deeply connected to each of us in and through Jesus. As Jesus told those disciples long ago, Jesus is in God. We are in Jesus, and Jesus is in us. We are deeply connected. We are in 
him, he is in us. We keep his commandments, his word at work in and through us in the world. The Holy Spirit of God is that in which we live and move and have our being. The very air we breathe. Just breathe. Amen. I invite you all at home to join with us now as we sing our hymn of response together, number 259, Spirit of the Living God. Amidst the emergency that's all around us, all over the world, I appreciate at times getting a chance to see those positive stories that we hear in the news, or we get a chance to read about, where individuals have stepped up in the midst of the challenges they themselves may face. They know that others are in a place of suffering and in need. So they reach out and they give what they have in order for others to have things that they may not have a chance themselves to have. And the stories of people paying utility bills or a grocery bill or being on the other end of a video call or even just text chat back and forth to provide some solace, to provide a chance to breathe, chance to step away from everything that is just so much right there in front of them, providing a chance for them to take a moment. And here at Kaiser Christian Church, we do that, and we see that we have a chance within our community to have an impact from all the different things that we offer, and even especially today chance to be part of this service virtually, where we are, to be plugged in, to be part of God's kingdom, through things such as the food bank, and face masks, and face coverings, and a chance to talk, and a chance to breathe. So this time during our service, there are a chance for you to plug in and be part of the financial side of, of our church, and there are multiple ways that you can do that. If you ever have a question, just call the office and we'll help you out with understanding how to plug in. Because we know while this moment in time we may give of something that we feel we need, it makes a world of difference to those in our community to give of ourselves to others that may need it more. Would you join me in prayer this morning?
Mighty God, please receive these gifts that we are giving as signs and symbols of the hope you have placed in each and every one of us. Help us to consider how we might continue to share that hope with those who are suffering, whether we know about it or not. Encourage us to raise up the hope of you in others by the actions of our hearts, by the actions of our heads, by the thoughts and the prayers that we offer. Lord, and especially through our chance to give through our financial resources in order to extend the reach of your kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. Each and every week, We gather around this table this table that sits as a reminder of our interconnectedness and our relationship with Jesus Christ our Savior whom God sent into the world God sent part of God's self to be intimately connected with each and every one of us. As we try to wrap our minds around the concept of an advocate, the Holy Spirit coming to surround us, to indwell us, to continue to inspire and comfort us in our journey together, closer and closer to God, who is never very far from us. This table is one of those places that reminds us. That we are in Christ and Christ is in us. It matters not if we gather around a table that looks exactly like that first one that is made of wood or plastic or where it sits. It matters that we come, that we respond to that invitation. Let's pray. Wonderful Lord, we have ate from the loaf drank from the cup, and it is good. We know you because you live with us and you live within us. May we embrace your commands and reap the promise of the Holy Spirit. And may these elements of your body and blood revitalize revitalize us in our current struggles and the struggles yet to come. Amen. Amen. We gather around tables the world over, tables in our houses of worship, in our homes, wherever we find ourselves. And we gather the elements that symbolize Christ's sacrifice for us, Christ's love for us, his relationship with us. We remember. We remember the night where Jesus met with his disciples and he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it for them, saying, This is my body, broken for you. As often as you eat it, you remember me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup and after giving thanks, he poured it out for people, for his friends. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for forgiveness of sin. 
as often as you drink it, you remember me. Let us join now together, surrounded by the Spirit of God in Holy Communion. It was a joy to share this time of worship with all of you this morning. I invite you to remember, just breathe. Let us sing our hymn of benediction together as we go forth. Just as you are too. 
people of God, go and breathe in the spirit of truth. Amen.